We turn skeletons into goddesses and look to them as if they might teach us how not to need. I have been living with anorexia for nearly six years. I received treatment and became healthy at the age of 14, but this year triggered a relapse that has affected my life drastically. I stopped dancing in order to focus on my education this year, and my best friend, my sister, moved out. The old dark thoughts started to creep in, and I listened to them. I started exercising excessively to make up for the lack of dance, and restricted my food intake until at the end of the first semester, my body could no longer take the damage. I had to be hospitalized. Life as an inpatient was so challenging. Gaining weight and seeing physical changes made me feel physically sick. Every mouthful was a struggle. After three weeks, I considered myself better and against the hospital's judgment, I went back to school. However, after being discharged, I was told I had to keep gaining weight when I already felt unbelievably huge. Not surprisingly, I started heading in a backwards direction. Though I wanted so badly to stay in school, the thoughts and my body image were so much more powerful than any other factors. I lost all the weight I'd gained and then some. My doctor sent me to emerge because of life-threatening vital signs, but I left. All I wanted to do was lose as much weight as possible before being stopped. Almost every other thought in my mind was secondary to the eating disorder. It took over me. The police had to come to my school and bring me to the hospital. My heart rate has been in the 30s during the night. I've been constantly fainting, and my heart simply can't handle all that I've put it through. I'm on bed rest, and my doctor is forcing me to stay for what she says will be a long time. Things have been terrible, and there have been several times I've wanted to die, or rather die than gain weight. How do you live when your mind is trying so desperately to kill you? Something I'm still struggling to answer. Anorexia has made my life a living hell. This disease has governed my life for nearly six years. Six years clouded with guilt, anxiety, and pain. And I am by no means the only one. Eating disorders have skyrocketed in recent years, and they are so much more serious than what they are made up to be. They can turn into deadly illnesses. Hi there. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Brooke Weaver. This film, The Anna Project, and the routine you just watched is about my sister, Morgan, and her ongoing battle the past seven years fighting an eating disorder. The words of the routine were written by Morgan towards the end of her grade 11 school year when she wanted to explain to her friends, peers, and classmates what was going on with her constant absences from school. Over that summer, I envisioned transforming her story through movement in order to address this mental illness. To provide you with a little more background information, eating disorders have run in my family for quite some time now. My mother was severely sick when she was younger in the hospital, and my aunt also faced challenges with one. My sister and I both competitively danced growing up, and given our family history, inevitably both developed eating disorders. I was never severely sick and moved on within a couple years through high school. My sister and I are extremely close. We're each other's best friends. But when I left for college, Morgan was dragged deeper, further into illness than ever before. The worst part was that I had no idea. And soon later, for the first time, she was admitted to the hospital for it. I was in shock and afraid. I wanted to be there for her and for my mother, but I couldn't do anything. And I felt so terrible because I felt as though I was the reason she became so sick. So as you hear throughout the piece, Morgan's been in and out of the hospital quite a bit. And at one point, the police had to come to her school to bring her back. That was the Thursday before Easter weekend. That was my first Easter without her. It was awful, not being able to enjoy an Easter egg hunt or chocolate, or even worse, family time. A day where everyone was brought together. But I felt her absence more than anything. It's been in and out of the hospital since then. One time I came home from school for the weekend after Morgan was readmitted, and my mom told me that her vitals were so bad that she could have passed away at any point. Hearing that made my heart shatter inside, and the thought still creeps into my mind sometimes, and it scares the living hell out of me. 
Since then, this battle hasn't ended. And sometimes it feels like it's just gotten worse. This battle isn't just Morgan's, it's all of ours, and it's hurting all of us. I feel upset for Morgan, but frustrated for my mother, since she's gone through this before and is now repeating with her daughter. Currently, Morgan is in treatment at a new center with a very hands-on approach to recovery. She's been there for almost three months now, but progress is slow and her mind is still fighting with her. Eating disorders are huge today. If you know someone who is struggling, find them help as soon as possible. Three years ago, the demons returned to my sister, my best friend, and nothing's been the same ever since. We can't laugh as easily. We don't enjoy the simple things. And I miss her. I don't want anyone or any family to have to go through this either. Please share this video for Morgan, my family, and for everyone out there who is struggling. Thank you.